Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Improv, a twisted party game. The game plays three to six players, takes about 45 to 90 minutes to play, and is for ages 16 and up. And in the game Improv, you are going to be attempting to get around the board. In order to do so, you'll be rolling a die up until a certain point, in which case you'll just start drawing cards and moving forward, in which you will try and win, end up at the finish line. The first player to finish is the winner of the game. In the game Improv, each player is going to be getting a player pawn of their chosen color. They're also going to be placing it on the start position of the main game board placed in front of all players. Each player will also be gathering one of these notepads and a pencil and have the die and of course the hourglass set somewhere within reach of all players. Set all aside all the decks of cards that have been shuffled and place them in their own unique categories as well as of course the psychiatric hospital. Place that near the game board as well and then you're ready to begin the game. When beginning the game, select one player to begin by taking the die and rolling it. After the player rolls the die, that player will then move that many spaces around the game board going clockwise until they end up in a certain position of a certain category card. When they do so, they're going to draw that specific category card and they're going to read it. Sometimes they're going to read them aloud, sometimes they won't. Then some of the cards are going to have different requirements in order for them to be able to succeed or fail the card. Uh, basically, the cards have different categories, and each of the categories is a different way in which you're going to interpret what you need to do in order to succeed. One of them, like maybe the mental health card, is going to basically have you end up in a mental health evaluation. You'll have a certain predicament you'll be in, you'll have to explain why that predicament is not insane. Players will judge you based on that, determining if you're insane or not, and if you are insane, you'll lose a turn. However, if you're not, you're going to get to move forward an extra space. Or an emotion card. If you draw one of these guys here, there's a certain emotion attached to that card. You're going to have to enact that emotion with your face and nothing else without talking. And if players are able to guess that emotion, you'll score points based on the number of correct guesses and players will also score as well, moving their pawns across the board. When one of these cards has been picked and one of the categories has been done, whether you succeed or fail, the die will pass to the next player in clockwise order, allowing them to roll the die and then move their character that many spaces and once again continue. Another thing to note in the game is that if you hit an improv space, you are going to be able to choose wildly any card you would like and perform that card's task and hopefully succeed. Once you get to a certain point on the game board, like for instance, if you get to the creativity spot, which got the little orange lettering on all the way across the game board, that is where you will stop. And the only way you'll proceed is by successfully answering the card's questions and moving along the board based on getting those questions correct. And of course, you're going to try to end up at the finish line after answering the cards and the categories correctly. And if you're able to do so, you win the game. Roll the die, move to the space, read one of the cards, perform, draw, or act out whatever the card says to do, pass after you have scored, and the player gets to the end is the winner. So let's discuss the game improv, but just before we do, I wanna go over some of the different category cards and how they function. Like for instance, creativity. And as an ancient ruler, your job is to draw this ancient ruler of things related to him or her. You can't write the name in any way. This card will make you roll a die, the die will hit a certain number, and then you will choose that specific ancient leader. And there's a different type of leader for each of the different six that could be from the die. And in this case, it would be Genghis Khan. In which case, you're going to draw the ruler, and people are going to then guess in if they are able to guess, they'll successfully move a space up. And of course, for every correct guess, you're going to move a space up as well. How about something like self-knowledge? You receive the Employee of the Year award at your pre-Christmas staff party. What is your reaction? And then you have the choices of A, B, C, or D. And you'll read them to everybody. Um, and players are going to determine what they think your answer is. And you'll have your answer. And if they're able to guess your answer, they'll move forward. And you'll move for every correct answer as well. Or mental health. You visit the emergency room due to the pain you're experiencing at the back of your ear. You suspect that Mossad install that Mossad installed a bug inside your ear while you were on a holiday in tariff a week ago and you're ending up in a mental health uh, evaluation and players are going to determine based on the story that you tell about why this happened to you whether or not you are insane or not insane if you're insane you're gonna have to take the psychiatric hospital token and uh, whenever it comes to your turn again you'll lose your turn and put this card down however if anybody else gets this before your turn this will move to them so only one player will ever have this card at the same time how about a task 
Guess which of the players would agree to tasting the meat that was made by growing their own uh, cells. Players are going to then be saying yes or no, and you're going to have to determine based on the players whether they do that or not. And then finally, of course, there's emotion. And emotion has a face on it. And um, this one here is frustrated. And you're going to have to display a frustrated face. It's one that my wife uses quite often. And basically, if you're able to use that face and uh, get people to guess what your emotion is, for every person that gets it correctly, you're going to move across the game board. And of course, if they get it, if they are able to guess correctly, they'll move as well. And that's the idea of the game. It's kind of a, it's a twisted party game, exactly what it sounds like. Utilizing the die, moving around the board, choosing your own category if you hit that wild space, or simply choosing the one that is available to you based on where you moved. And then once you hit the specific, like, end run of the game, that is where you're going to be only moving ahead whenever you get things correct and you'll have to go through the different categories in order to succeed. Uh, this game is kind of like a, a little bit of a party style, like mm, charades type of a game. Uh, it's got unique little cards like the emotion card where you have to enact a certain emotion to it and there's a whole bunch of different emotions and they give you kind of an example of all the different faces that people are going to have to make based on that emotion um, and then you have like different tasks you'll have to be required to do uh, I think different categories are going to resonate with different people some players are going to enjoy trying to make facial emotions others will enjoy trying to tell a story about a specific situation that they've encountered and why that they are not insane based on that situation mental health cards are a bit challenging in comparison to the others, I think, because you really have to come up with a good excuse for some of these cards. You're in a remote meeting where suddenly you start sharing your screen with a non-stop slideshow of nudes from your recent trip to Spain. You then start telling your coworkers that I'm the most beautiful of them all and the ugly ones would have... <laughs> won't be allowed to enter heaven. You refuse to stop sharing the screen or end the meeting, despite your manager asking you to. And it requires a little bit of like impromptu know-how because you're also gonna have to deal with the timer. And with this timer, each of the different tasks is going to be timed uh, based on what it is and how long you'll have to do or, or enact or draw a specific thing is going to be based on this timer, of course. And so it adds a little bit of rigor to the game as well. You're having to be expedient in your choices and what you say and what you don't say. Uh, a lot of them, the, like the more mental, not mental, the self-knowledge questions, the ones that you'll have to uh, make a choice and players will have to make a choice as well with you, and get to know the players that are at the table with you as well. This is a lot about getting to know people as well as about learning about people's talents and creative aspects to them. They might be acting something out, they might be drawing something on a piece of paper, or just simply making a face. And you'll be utilizing that skill that you might have gathered uh, as you move around this board here. And of course, the challenging portion comes in to where you have to go across the game board when you can only move without rolling the die, in which case you'll have to do at least quite a few of these different categories to end up at the finish line. It can be a quick game, it can be a rather lengthy game. You might not like the choices that you have to do or the, the actions that you have to perform. We might really, really enjoy them, but in general, there's going to be a whole lot of laughs. There's a lot of fun that's going to be had in this game, and you want to learn a whole lot about the people that are around you. Does this game need to be done on a game board? No, it does not. And in fact, if you add the eight 18 plus adults game mode. Uh, this one here not only gives you the more spicy questions, but in addition to that, you can actually keep score with just simply playing the cards. You'll be selecting numbers, picking up a card, and scoring points, and whoever gets to the coveted 15 points is the winner. And that's pretty simple how that works. You'll get points for every time you get an emotion as opposed to moving along the game board, and so on and so forth. Uh, this game is definitely gonna resonate with party players. Some people who enjoy party games, people who enjoy drinking games are probably going to enjoy this one as well. You can probably make a drinking game up of this one as well. I usually imagine most party games can involve drinking in some way, shape, or form. But what it's really about is learning about the people around you and how that they interact with certain things, their different talents and skills, and of course, uh, being able to perform and act in front of your friends and family, like a game like Salad Bowl as well, or Celebrity. These kind of are all entailed into this game. Uh, so if you've played something like that brain game, whatever it's called, or uh, those different types of uh, Salad Bowl guessing type of games, then this is going to be one to take a look at. Impro, basically improvisation, which is what you're going to be doing a lot in this game. Um, we had a mixed bag, and it depending on what people decided they were doing, uh, they would enjoy it or they wouldn't enjoy it. Some people did not like the idea of having to do the mental health cards because they had to think on the spot of this crazy scenario and come up with some unique and uh, frustratingly difficult to obtain sane thing that they're doing. Other people were not able to make up certain emotions because some of the emotions are quite challenging, like pride. Um, surprise is not so bad, but indifference or shy, pity, guilt, fatigue, 
anger, sadness, disappointment, anxiety. Anxiety, that's really frustrating. It's hard to do. And some of these are gonna be really, really challenging in order to perform, while others are pretty easy. Happy, sad, you know? But maybe sad looks like angry or upset or frustrated. So these can be quite challenging. Um, and then these easier ones are gonna be more so the multiple choice questions or questions about who you think does what. But that's basically the game. I think you guys pretty much get this game. If you like games that involve party aspects and improvisation, then this is a game for you to check out. For us, it was a solid 50-50 uh, as to what we liked and didn't like in the game, but overall everyone enjoyed themselves and would definitely play again. And I think most people would even prefer a little bit of spirits involved as well in the game Improv, do you dare to play? Thank you for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Improv. If you're interested in taking a look at this game, it'll be on Kickstarter. There's a link down below in the description, or if you're early, there's a way you can click to join the pre-order. You can also go ahead and check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more for you to take a look at. If you'd like, you can join our live stream, which is every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST on Twitch and on Facebook, and it uploads to YouTube every Monday, where it's edited and cleaned up for you. If you want, you can join us on Patreon for a dollar. It helps us support us, as well as give out free games when we do our live stream. That's pretty much all I got for you this time, and as always, I look forward to improvisation with you next time.